right patient. And how do we make sure we have the right patient? Check the armband. We're going to be scanning. You guys all have, will have scanners in, in clinical. Okay, what's the second R? Right drug. So I'm going to use my MAR or your computerized uh, medical record, and I'm going to compare it to the drug. Rosef and Rosef and right drug. What else? Right dose. So this is two grams, and that's two grams. What else? Right time. Uh, it's 10 o'clock, and I'm trying to give this medication by 10, 10 o'clock. Right route, very important. So today, what, what medications, what's the route that we're using today? IV what? Piggyback. Okay, so uh, other names are secondaries, um, and it says IV PB. Okay, so when we give push medications, that's directly into the, uh, the vein and the doctor or the prescriber will order that. Uh, the prescriber will order the right route of the medication. Okay, because you know sometimes we can give Pneumovax sub-2 and sometimes we can give Pneumovax IM. Right? How do we know how to give it? We check our prescriber's orders. So that's, how, that's why we have to make sure we're giving it the right route. We would never want to push Rocephin IV push. And you need to get comfortable looking that up in your book because your book will tell you for continuous infusion, which is what we're doing, versus direct IV administration, which would be IV push. So you're gonna write those on your drug cards as well. Um, so we did patient, dose, route, time, what else? Write documentation, so when we get done our medications, I'm gonna sign it off, what else? Write to refuse, I like to use decline, I've educated my patient about the medication, why they need it. We've had a discussion about it, and the patient declined it because they've had bloody diarrhea all morning. It might be a good thing they declined it, right? I had C. difficile before, and I know that antibiotic you're giving me is causing me to have diarrhea. Well, you might kind of be right, okay? So that's the right to refuse or decline, and we would document that. And what's the last one? We said all seven? Okay. So you guys are going to come in, write down your piece of paper, your seven R's. You're going to check the seven R's three times. When you prepare your medication, when you double check, make sure you've got everything right, and then at the patient's bedtime is your third and final check. Okay? Triple check. Um, what else are we going to say? Oh, I know. So when you get your MAR, how many of you have already done the math for the Rosef and how fast you're going to give it? Well, we don't know yet because we don't know how big the bag is. Um, let me see what I have here. I have a 100 milliliter bag, okay? So you're going to look at your Ceph trioxone, and I have a 100 milliliter bag, and I have to give it over 45 minutes. So I want to do that math early before I get confused, all right? So write down your seven R's. Write your rate of administration for your piggyback. And then what is the rate of administration for your saline there? Six hours. She's doing the math. Six and eighty three. Uh, right. The answer is eighty three point three 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 three, right? Yep. So what is the final answer? Eighty three milliliters per hour. So we find it's best if you go ahead and do your math first, write it on this piece of paper, and refer back to it when you're doing your second check and your third check, okay? And remember, we round just like you did for your math test. I like doing this at the math test, actually. Okay, so, um, so you're going to do that. And uh, each agency also has their policy about flushing. The Delaware Tech's policy and procedure is that we flush with five milliliters of saline before and after the medication, okay? Um, so basically, I have this MAR. I had a prescriber's order for a saline lock. Uh, the prescriber wants me to hang this 500 normal saline, NS is normal saline, NSS is normal saline solution, and what is that? How would I know if I have normal saline? What's it, what's it look like on my bag? Very good, 0 0.9. Can somebody 
grab me a 500 normal feeling bag. Um, I left it somewhere in a package, please. Okay. So the doctor wants me to run continuous IV, 500 normal saline every six hours. So I'm going to set that up, connect it. My patient's going to get 83 milliliters per hour. And then at um, 10 o'clock, I need to hang my road sapping. So you guys have mini bags or piggybacks in your bag. Okay. Um, they may already be prepared from pharmacy. If not, we play pharmacist a little bit. And there'll be a label in your drawer, and just slap your label on here. Okay, pharmacy, here's your gross staff in two grams and 50 or, or 100. Okay. Um, so you're going to prepare your medication. Uh, it's also important to check allergies. Does anybody have any questions about reading the MAR? You guys did this before, so. Okay. All right, good. Um, So I don't think there's anything different in preparing the medications than before. And I think I'm ready to start. Thank you so much. I don't know what I did. So I come to my cart. I've written down my seven R's. I've done my math calculation, which I want to make sure I do have here. The drug book says that I can give rosefin in 30 minutes. So if I have a 50 milliliter bag, I'm going to infuse it at 100 cc's an hour. And if I have a 100 cc bag, which I have, what's my rate of administration going to be? <coughs> if I have a 100 cc bag and I have to infuse it over 30 minutes, what's my rate of administration going to be? I had three pens when I left my <laughs> Very good. 200 milliliters per hour. All right, so I've got my uh, math calculations there. All right, so um, what you guys are going to do is you're going to pull out your mini bag. You're going to open it up. Is it too warm in here or is it me? It's me, okay. Because yesterday we were too cold and then we turned the heat up. And I didn't know if it was me or not. You're going to open your mini bag. This is 100 milliliter of normal saline solution. Okay? And my drug book says that I can mix rosefin and normal saline, although we would never do that. Pharmacy does that. I'm going to slap my label. Rosefin, do I have the right drug? Rosefin, 2 grams. And um, I'm going to daytime initial this. So <coughs> today is 1.15, I think. Yeah. 10 a.m. And I'm going to put my initials, DTI, daytime initial. Okay. Um, and then I have my 500 cc bag right here. This is normal saline solution, 0.9%. So I'm going to open that up. All of these bags have a little perforation there. So if you just pull it straight down, you don't need to manhandle it. Sometimes people, that's why I carry scissors. Um, if the perforation's not there, you have to use scissors to open it up. It's like getting the practice of, you know, you have to have your Wheaties and pull that off. Okay. We're also going to make sure that we label all of our tubings in our bags. This is the label for this bag. Again, DTI. What does DTI stand for? Okay. So I'm going to put that on here. And then I'm going to um, I'm going to have two tubings, so I'm going to label my primary tubing and my secondary tubing. Um, I got sidetracked, surprise, uh, when I was assessing my IV site. It was inserted on the 15th. How many days is an IV site good for? Close, 96 hours, four days. Okay. So part of my assessment is is I'm going to make sure that my IV site is still good. IV tubing also gets changed every 96 hours or four days. So 
it kind of works out that when the tubing's due to be changed, it's time to change the IV site. All right. So you guys are probably going to find some IVs that might be expired. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write DTI on here, and I'm going to wrap this label around my tubing. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do my second check. I've already got my medications out. This is my second check. I have rocephin, two grams. Uh, it's the right time at 10 o'clock. I'm doing IV piggyback over 45 minutes. And um, I don't know if I did that 45 minutes. Because the drug book says 30 minutes. So, um, So it's 75 milliliters per hour because my uh, MAR says I have to give it over 45 minutes. Although the drug book says I can give it over 30, so I know it's still in that safe range. I'm not giving it faster than what the drug book said. I'm giving it slower, which might be okay. All right. Um, and then my second thing that the uh, prescriber has ordered is 500 of normal saline for over six hours, which I have. The other things that I need are my tubing. The primary tubing is the long tubing, and the secondary tubing is the one with the hook, okay, the short tubing. So primary and secondary, and I have them unopened. I also need a, um, several alcohol swabs, and I always try to be prepared, so I want to put some in my pocket, but I have them in case. And I also need a saline flush which is what we passed out today. Have any of you used a saline flush before? Yeah? Okay. This is actually a 10 milliliter saline flush. So we're going to use five to flush before, and we're going to use five to flush after. Okay? I want you all to go ahead and practice opening it up. Again, it's perforated at the top. You just tear it down. Um, there's a bucket. Where's the sailing bucket? Okay, the thing with these sailing flushes, first of all, you want to make sure it is sailing. 0 0.9 sodium chloride. Um, it says IV fluid only, <laughs> IV flush only. It's a 10 milliliter single use. Okay, there is a, a nice little air bubble in there. We cannot push air into our patients, so you need to be very cognizant of your syringes and your tubing to make sure you don't have any air, all right? The tricky thing with these things is that the plunger sticks to the barrel of the syringe. So my instinct would be to hold it straight up and down and push the air out, but if I do that, it's going to unstick and I'm going to spray everybody, the patient, me, my instructor, and the instructor gets flustered. All right, so what you have to do, you have to unstick the plunger first. So you pull your plunger down, unstick it so you hear it. Okay, everybody unstick your plunger. Okay, now take your cap off. Don't spray your partner, it's just like a gun. Don't contaminate the ends because we're going to recap. So either you turn it up and then squeeze your air out slowly, holding your syringe straight up and down and just push your air out so your syringe is ready. I wouldn't do it over your paper. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Or your MAR. <laughs> and I have an air bubble down here stuck to my plunger. The best way to get air out is to knuckle knock. One knuckle knock and all my air goes to the top. Knuckle knock. Now my air is going to the top and it's on the side, so I need to pull it back down again and I'm going to push it up. So I, darn that air bubble keeps getting on the side there. Okay, and then I can cap my syringe, and it's prepared, but I'm always going to make sure that, because air always magically gets in here. Okay. So your syringe is ready. Unstick the plunger first, push your air out, okay? All right, 
So um, I believe I have all my supplies to go get my medication. So I'm going to uh, leave my handy dandy medication cart and I have my supplies and my MAR and I'm going to come over here to my patient's room. Hi Miss Bonebreaker, how's it going? <coughs> I have your Rosef in here. Uh, tell me your name and your date of birth again and I'm going to compare the ID bracelet to my MAR or the computer. Okay, we don't have scanners here. Um, tell me your name, Susie Bonebreaker, and your date of birth, 42357. That's correct. Now, I don't see an allergy bracelet. Are you allergic to any allergies? Do you have any allergies? <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure you're awake. Thanks. Um, so, you're not allergic to any. Okay, this is good. I'm getting ready to give you Rosefin. It's an antibiotic for your pneumonia. Um, this is the first dose that you've had. Uh, it is an antibiotic, some of the common side effects. Now, you can have already discussed this with your instructor before you go in the room. You make sure you know your medication before you go in. You're going to provide some basic patient teaching. I'm giving you an antibiotic. But if you've already told us, you know, you don't have to do that with the patient, but um, it doesn't hurt to practice, right? So I'm giving you your antibiotic, uh, Rosefin, but the doctor always also wants me to give you some IV fluids. Uh, so I'm gonna, you're going to be connected to an IV now. And um, I see that your catheter looks good. I have to make sure I'm not skipping any steps. I feel like I'm skipping something. And I'm going to assess my dressing again to make sure nothing happened between the first time I assessed it and, the la and since I've come back. Because you know they eat breakfast or they fall out or somebody pulls it out or, you know, stuff happens. So your IV site still looks good. I forgot my gloves, but I always keep gloves in my pocket. Is this stuff blocking the... Okay. Um, so again... I'm getting ready to access body fluids. Body fluids will be on the arm, on the, um, the end of that, the allure lock, okay? So I always wear gloves before I touch body fluids. Do gloves protect me or protect my patient? Mm -hmm. Only protects me. Me wearing gloves does not protect my patient. It only protects me. I protect my patient by how? Washing my hands, very good. So I'm going to wash my hands when I go into my patient's room, identify my patient, provide the privacy if I'm doing a central line, I've explained the procedures to the patient, and I'm making sure his arm stays safe on this high cable. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open my uh, primary tubing. Is that the long tubing or the short tubing? Long. Very good, long tubing. This is also magically perforated. You don't have to manhandle these, poke your whole poke your thumb through the plastic wrapper. There is a hidden perforation right there. All you have to do is pull it apart. So you don't have to manhandle it, just give it a little gentle <coughs> pull. Okay. When you pull your tubing out, and you notice on the front, 10 drops per ml. What if I have to count drops? Did you all have to count drops today? You did? Oh, well we can count drops later. When this comes out, I'm going to inspect it, make sure it looks sterile and it's intact. The package is sterile and intact. Um, I can take off this um, paper. I don't need any of that. Uh, both ends of my tubing are capped, and I'm going to keep them capped because that prevents them from getting contaminated. Right. The very next thing I do, I take it out, I've inspected it. The very next thing you're going to do is clamp your tubing, okay, because um, it comes unclamped. Ooh, it doesn't come out like this. Now, one of the safety things is your tubing cannot touch the floor, touch the bedpan, be in the trash can. You need to stay in control of your tubing at all times, okay? So I'm holding it up here close to me, and I'm going to untangle it. They're usually not tangled. Okay. 
with me. Okay. So after I've inspected, what's the very next thing I must do? Clamp it. And I know it's not clamped because it's sliding down the tubing. Okay. There is a blue clamp here. I don't need to mess with this blue slide clamp. The only clamp I'm using is the roller clamp. So I'm going to roll it down 